Don't worry about it, Ari. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hanging out, man. I'm just hanging out. Just having a good time. Give me like two seconds. I will be right back. What's going on, everybody? What is going on? I'm not doing much of anything at the moment. Did a water change just because. And uh, took the reactor out of the sump area. So, no skimmer, no reactor. Just some pond matrix and the uh, Santa Monica algae scrubber. We're gonna kind of see what happens. So, you know, basically to uh, alleviate some of my problems with the small sump, getting rid of that reactor helps out quite a bit. Trying to raise nutrients. Um, I mean, it's it's been something that I've been battling, and you know I should probably leave it alone. But I pulled the skimmer out because some of the mollies that I added to the tank got sucked into the skimmer inlet. Since I pulled it out, I cleaned it. And it's been off the tank for a few days now, and I've just left it that way. The uh, the reactor. I took it off to clean it today, and I decided that, for today anyway, I'm not going to put it back. So, I did check uh, phosphates a couple days ago, and they were zero. So, when I fed a frozen cube last night, I uh, uh, threw a pretty good amount of reefroids on top of that frozen cube. So, the uh, scrubber has pretty much kicked into <laughs> I mean it's it's in high maintenance mode now so the screen has never looked like that for me personally so I may very well uh, pull the screen off of it and scrape some of that algae off there just kind of see just kind of see so and there's a lot of people that only run, you know, algae turf scrubbers on their systems with nothing else. So, you know, it's all this is, is basically a one big experiment and cross your fingers and hope everything works out in your favor. So, I don't know. took care of that today. Now I'm just hanging out. Uh, what am I trying to achieve? Uh, I guess I'm trying to validate that the algae turf scrubber can run this system alone. So
should mention that uh, once the comment pops up on the screen, um, <clears throat> and then once it disappears, I can't see it again. So 15 milliliters of the balling method. Um, unfortunately for me, this is the last of the balling solutions. Um, the big thing to take part is, if you can see there, especially using the Tropic Moran balling method, all levels are supposed to be dosed equally, but you can see it's got a stair step to it. And um, the really only solution or, or observation is this thing. I don't think that, uh, I don't think that it's the worst dosing pump in the world. Um, I don't regret the purchase at all, but as far as uh, accuracy, I think that you get what you pay for. So, um, yeah, there's there's always been air in the, in the tubing, which is why I have um, check valves everywhere. Uh, nope, reefing with O. I just haven't been running a skimmer for a few days and uh, took the reactor out of here. So uh, that's a coral box doser, which is basically, from my understanding, the j doser, except for this is Wi-Fi. So uh, one of the questions popped up, have I considered um, swapping out the sump? Yes. The issue is this ATO container cannot go on the exterior of the stand. As you can see here, toys. Here toys so the only solution is to build another cabinet or build a cabinet bigger than this one to store the ATO container in and the uh, dosing solutions and all of that that is the only way that it's going to work I cannot leave this out because if I do this container will be full of toys it'll be stood on and it will be pretty much probably broken in no time uh, the SPS you can see the bird's nest there is about to die completely. There's a white frag. There's a couple white frags. So it really depends on the coral. Um, Money cap is doing good. Got some white tips on that coral right there in the center. The green slimer is doing good. Uh, these pieces back here have pretty much been deteriorating over time. This little section of corals right here is uh, doing so-so. That bird's nest is bleaching now. Um, so, you know, it, it, it could be a number of things. Uh, it could be the fact that my Dosing liquids, which again are supposed to be dosed equally, are not being dosed equally. Uh, it's probably a combination of zero to super low phosphate and um, zero nitrates. So, you know, I've, I've, I've battled the, the nitrates for a while. You know, I'll do a video on it and in the comment section below. I'm doing the test wrong or the test is bad or this, that, and the other thing. So it's a Red Sea test kit. I bought it like four or five, six months ago. The test kit's good. Um, there's actually acro power in this thing right here. So um, back to the question a second ago, the auto feeder feeds pellets twice a day. I feed a full frozen cube once a day. Um, so, you know, it probably is low nutrients. So with the help of some fellow YouTubers, <laughs> sorry, I walked away from the camera for a second. 
I have some. So this is what um, Amarazol TV used. So it's a phosphorus supplement for planted aquariums. So I have some of this. Need to do more research. Don't know how much to, yet to add. And Jason Myers and both Rico suggested this. And this is crazy because I know people are using stump remover and whatever, but this is like $3. Um, if you look it up, it's just, it's Greenleaf uh, KNO3. So you can go to greenleafaquariums.com. But this is, uh, it's like $7 or whatever. Uh, Ari, I took the scrubber offline. Um, the, so I, it was a couple different things. I greatly increased the light schedule on the scrubber, which I don't know if it was dinos in the tank or not, but it was the start of a pretty terrible algae bloom inside the display. So I went back to my typical ATS uh, light schedule. Uh, I'm back to my regular T5 schedule. And um, the, so the issue was, is of course I, I didn't change the T5 lighting or the castles and I was getting algae in the display. So I'm gonna experiment. No skimmer in the tank. And uh, I'm gonna see if the, what the ATS can do. I do need more fish and I want more fish. So that should help out. But, you know, I've, I've talked to multiple people on uh, this right here. And this is probably the route that I'm gonna take. I just need to get a bottle to mix it in. It looks like it's, I don't know if it's got some clumps inside of there or not, but I don't know really enough about it. Um, so seven fish, I have like six in here now. Yeah, Ari, I don't do, I did a water change today, like four gallons just because. Um, I only do a water change maybe once a month, maybe once a month. So, and I stopped doing water changes to an attempt anyway to increase uh, nutrients in the tank. I mean, it's possible that the uh, the ATS is. I mean, it's definitely gone into overdrive now that I'm not running the skimmer. So, I have some tools to combat the issue. Um, do you need a return pump for the Red Sea Reef for 250? Do I need one? I don't need one, I have one, but if you're thinking about buying it, it does not come with a return pump. I started with a Varios, Reef Octopus Varios 6. I'm now running the Neptune Core 20 return pump. I have about five, six fish in the tank. <clears throat> The newest addition is this tang right here. And unfortunately, the other live aquaria fish, two of them passed away. And uh, the firefish that I bought is disappeared. So I found this clown in the sump. Somehow he rode down into the sump. So, you know, I, 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 do, I do think that this is a uh, low nutrient issue. Uh, I do believe that. Unfortunately, I don't believe that adding more fish or increasing my feedings will change much of anything. Uh, the phosphates move around a little bit, but how are you liking the gyres? I have two MP40s. Um, I had an MP40 on this tank. Uh, I prefer gyres 
just for multiple reasons. Uh, but the magnet's really small and it's up real high, so my kids can't get a hold of it yet. Uh, plus, you can run two gyro pumps off one controller. What's up, Green Vet? What's up, Alan? What's going on? Am I going to get the Apex PAR meter? I've looked at it, but um, I'm not going to say no. My next purchase that I'm trying to justify is either the Neptune Dose or the GHL 2.1. And I should probably, I'm leaning in the GHL direction just because it's a standalone unit. It comes with four heads for the price. Um, the, I, I like the idea of having the dose because I can control it through the apex. But if I went the dose route, I would want the one link module so that I can run it off the one link module and it starts to add up quickly, uh, pretty quickly as far as price is concerned in that fashion. And you only get two pump heads. So, you know, the one link module is 120 something dollars. The dose is $300. So basically, uh, you start to get up there pretty quick. Yeah, unfortunately, the water changing ideas would be great, except for that's an exterior wall behind the tank. And uh, my garage is behind me. So automatic water changes would probably hurt me in the long run. I need to lower some of that lock line to get the water bubbles out. No basement, nope. Uh, dose is only two heads, yep. Dose is uh, two pump heads. So, I'm really leaning towards the GHL and be done with it. I've been reading quite a bit about it and uh, it seems like some new folks are having some issues getting the, the, uh, um, the doser set up. What's up, IFG? But, um, you know, once it's set up, it's kind of a set it and forget it. Yeah, Phil, Phil and both Phil and Reefing with O uh, run the GHL 2.1, and they really like it. So I know that uh, if I have any questions, there's some folks I can reach out to, and they could definitely help me. <clears throat> but I'm gonna, as soon as the Tropic Moran liquids are done, uh, I got some ESV, the Ionic. <clears throat> I'm gonna dose into the tank. What's up, Dale's Reef? Um, with Acro Power. So I could probably increase the uh, Acro Power dosage because it's, it's pretty low. I think it's like split up to three or four doses at like three or four uh, doses a piece. What's up, Reef Community Worldwide? For those that don't know, Reef Com Community Worldwide street does live streams quite often. So, you know, if you're, you're just sitting around, want a channel to go look at, slide on over there. You ever use Polyfilter at all? Um, I don't ever hardly run any mechanical filtration in this tank. So, the last two comments, unfortunately, I did not see. I really wish that I could see them once they've populated. I'm using the YouTube app, so if anybody knows how I can view comments, or if you can, then please let me know because clearly I can't figure it out. How do you guys get Coraline to cover all of your rocks? So basically I introduced this little piece of rock here to the tank and twice as much milliliters Tropic Moran, uh, which this piece of rock has been with me for a couple of years now, put it into the tank and um, um, the, it just took off. And it's just kind of strange because if you look at this tank, probably six to eight months ago, the white was, the, the, the rock was completely white, pristine white, as white as some of the corals are that are struggling in the tank. Dosing calcium has helped with the coralline. 
so I don't dislike the Tropic Marine boiling method, but with the ESV, I will be able to easy, e it'll be easier to manipulate alkalinity and calcium. So, and I should say that I've been watching the pH of the tank since I haven't been running a skimmer, which I'm not drawing air from outside to begin with, but I've not noticed any, uh, any effect of the pH. I just calibrated the probe a couple months ago. I'll probably actually need to look at buying another, a newer Apex probe. Did you see my comment about the matrix? I did not, Jonas, I'm sorry. Once the comments pop up and then disappear, I can't see them anymore, so. Sorry about that. I don't know anything about the S500. Um, the, I think the difference is, is it's an all-in-one tank versus a tank with a sump, so it's gonna be user preference. But I, I don't know about the, the S500, unfortunately. I'm, I'm thrilled with this tank, you know. Of course, I do wish that I had a bigger tank. I like the height of it. I know you put a decent amount of matrix in there. Matrix removes nitrates. Do you, did you try removing some? Um, the answer to that question is no. But what I did do today is I pulled the matrix out of the reactor. It is still in the sump. Um, I could pull out a handful of it and see what kind of happens. So it's a great suggestion. I think somebody else left that in the comment of my video today. But if you pulled half, you would get an increase in nitrates. It's possible. Um, I didn't start this tank with all of the matrix that's in there now. I did move matrix over from my last tank. So it's been slowly added to the, uh, to the tank, but Per your suggestion and a, another comment, I'll pull some matrix out and, you know, we'll see what happens. I would say it can't hurt anything, but that would be a false statement when you're dealing with a closed environment. Uh, do I dose reef energy? I do not. I don't even know what reef energy is. So how much matrix do you have in there? Um, uh, a lot. I don't. I don't know the. I don't know the. So, matrix, matrix, and then there's some pond matrix back here. So I can pull this matrix out, and then I have this piece of rock that I like to put in my display at some point. That's why it's in the sump. But. I already have a bucket out and I'm going to grab some of that matrix today and uh, Red Sea Supplement, check it out. I will definitely check it out. What happened to the skimmer? Um, basically, uh, I decided to add some mollies to my sump and two of them got sucked into the skimmer. So that's a summary of what happened. <laughs> Luckily, I was paying attention to it, and I noticed when my skimmer stopped skimming um, that something was going wrong. Do you dose vinegar? I've never dosed vinegar. Skimmer popped a molly. That's hilarious. What about Miracle Mud? So, the thing about Miracle Mud for me is I know that folks have ran it in, in a reactor. Uh, I really don't want to go down that route. The other thing is, is my sump is small. It's not something that I've ruled out and uh, maybe I'll try it. Uh, have you thought of it? Fortunately, I don't know. I need to get an iPad or something so I can see the rest of the comments. Sorry about that, folks. Ari seems to know quite a bit about uh, um, the ESV, so I may have to hit up Ari on the side. Comes with a plastic block. The, the Miracle Mud. I probably have to get a, go to the dollar store um, 
probably have to go to the dollar store and try to get a, a Tupperware container that's that I can fit in the sump. So with no skimmer in there, I can add it to the sump. So yeah, I've seen multiple videos with uh, Mike Paletta talking about the Miracle Mud and swapping out half of it every, I guess, year or so. Lots of great suggestions. Keep them coming. Uh, when you clean your gyres, you run them in buckets of vinegar. You don't have to take them apart yet. Uh, let's see. So what I do is I pull the gyre off, I put it in a bucket with vinegar and water. I let it run in there for about an hour. Uh, I brush it clean and I put it on the tank. I've taken both of them apart once to clean them. And I've had them for a year or more now. So basically I just take them off the tank whenever they get covered in purple and just run them in vinegar, rinse them off, throw them back in the tank. Thanks for that suggestion, Brinks. What's up, Bubba? I don't know if you all watched the, the BRS video on Friday, but um, uh, Engineering Aquariums left a comment at the end of the video and basically said, because the, the gyre pumps come with spare parts. So, you know, that's the one good thing from... Hello from, from the U.S. to Israel. Uh, thank you, Bubba. Yeah, I'll look at, uh, the, I'll look at the, the five pound Miracle Mud package. You know, what can that hurt? And right now would be the perfect time to do that since I don't have the skimmer in the sump and I have uh, a little bit of real estate to deal with. What's up, Reef Jeeves? <clears throat> I may try to mix up some of that KNO3 today. need to do a little bit more research. I know that it's, uh, I've read where people actually just dose the powder, you know, like a teaspoon of powder to the tank. And then uh, it seems like the majority of people actually take it and mix it with RO water. And then with that, with that planted aquarium calculator, it'll actually tell you how much the nitrates will be increased. So I've done a little bit of research on it. I just need to do a little more. minutes uh, start out slowly uh, remove some rot first give it a week see what happens the less dosing of foreign chemicals to the system the better I agree with that so what I'm actually gonna do today is pull out some pond matrix because unfortunately removing rock is not an option uh, this is one big rock structure this is one big rock structure um, they do not break down they are cemented together so the only viable option is the uh, the matrix. You know, if I'm going to experiment, let's uh, let's all experiment together. We all got to learn somehow, don't we? It's much easier to learn on somebody else's dime. <laughs> Hey, thanks, Stephen. I appreciate that. Much, much appreciated. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm simply taking usually somebody else's uh, um, experience and either following suit or modifying it to work for me. And I love to see what, what people are doing. And hopefully I can, you know, learn or, or realize something that I should have done that I didn't do. 
<clears throat> Thank you, Reef, Reef Jeeves. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. That Coral Beauty's having a pass it along. Next project is a scrubber. Yeah, I think that you asked if the scrubber was worth it. Um, your filtration is set up to handle a much heavier bylaw, so you're not only going to have fish, then reducing filtration makes sense, I guess. You know, I, it's a guessing game at this point. Uh, there was a question on the on the scrubber. Um, so CJ has the same scrubber, but he has a 120 gallon tank, and then probably probably about 150 gallon total. And his scrubber does an awesome job on his tank, and mine has done maybe too well of a job on this tank. So, I mean, you can, you can decrease the light schedule and run the light schedule for, you know, four hours, five hours, or whatever. Um, I have a fuge at Gross Chato. Uh, very well, you think it's worth it? Sure. Uh, I think that, that if you can export the nutrients um, and the Chato's working for you, then, then by all means, keep it going. So I've, I've, in my first tank, it had a fuge and it grew Chato quickly uh, and in great. And then my second tank uh, wouldn't grow Chato at all. Uh, are you running your display lights at high par? Uh, never run any par uh, meter on this tank, but I'm running four T5s and two Kessel 160s. So, you know, I don't know what the exact par is. Kessels come on at 9 a.m., ramp up for about two hours. T5s come on at noon, and uh, T5s go off at 6. Kessels ramp down from like 7.30 to 9. You know, and I've, I've said this uh, before, but the Kessels are now supplementing the T5s. The, the, the Kessels are basically providing a shimmer now. What's up, Mike the Reefer? It's a lot of par without any food. I, I, yeah, I mean, again, I'm feeding the, the, the tank twice a day uh, with pellets with an auto feeder and a full frozen cube, so, you know. But I agree, you know, it's, it's definitely um, a lack of, I shouldn't say definitely, I'm suspecting that it's a lack of uh, um, nutrients in the tank. I mean, I know that my water's good. Uh, my parameters, for the most part, are stable. So I haven't checked calcium in a couple of weeks, but I check alkalinity quite often. But I agree, you know, which is um, why I've got the skimmer out of the tank and we're going to experiment with running the ATS. Let the scrubber do the work. <laughs> hey, you can talk about whatever you want to. <laughs> you can talk about whatever you want to. Uh, Am I happy with the gyre? I have the same tank and I'm looking to upgrade my flow pumps. I love the gyre pumps. If you go over to the website, uh, pelfrey.net, you can see my exact gyre settings. Then I have CJ's video where it explains on how to uh, program the gyre pumps with the advanced settings. So I'm basically copied his uh, um, flow pattern, except I'm only going up to like 16, or uh, excuse me, like 60%, but that gives me the standing wave, if you will. So, yeah, I really like the gyre pumps. Uh, I had an MP40. I really like the, the Vortec pumps too, don't get me wrong, but I have to have the pumps up high. I can't have the uh, pumps down low because the kids will pull them down put them in the back on the bottom set to 15%. So I signed up for the BRS uh, giveaway. They're giving away two MP10s and 
you know, if I was lucky enough to win them, I would put the, the MP10s on the back of the tank and uh, do the, uh, the same thing. But I really need to lower that lock line right there because some air bubbles are driving me crazy. All right, folks, it's been 35 minutes. I hear my youngest one, she's up from her nap, so I'm gonna go get her. If I leave the $12 tripod here, when she comes down here, I'll need to buy another $12 tripod because it's gonna lose the battle. Thanks, CJ, appreciate it. So, appreciate everybody stopping by. Check out the video I put out this morning. Check out the video I put out Friday. Check out the video I put out Thursday. Check them all out, why not? Go over to the website, pelfrey.net. I'm on Instagram, Pelfrey's Brief. And uh, thanks, Stephen, for stopping by. Thanks for the suggestions. We're gonna pull out some uh, Matrix here in a minute. And 